Well, the sense of loss extends far beyond U.S. borders. Flags were lowered to half-staff across Israel yesterday as that nation honored its first astronaut in space, Ilan Ramon. The Air Force Colonel was already something of a hero nationally there for his exploits as a combat pilot. He's also remembered in a special service at his high school alma mater. And two days of mourning have been declared in Karnal, India, the birthplace of U.S. astronaut Kapana Shaula. She was the world's first Indian-born astronaut on a U.S. space mission and was widely seen as a symbol of changing attitudes toward women in Indian society. Well, the search for answers into what happened this weekend is taking many forms, as we mentioned, from horseback to high-tech. Again, on space correspondent Miles O'Brien joins us now with a closer look from Johnson Space here. Once again, D. Miles. Neon, there's so many ways that investigators will be uh, looking at the data, putting the pieces together on this, trying to come up with a way of uh, solving what happened to Columbia. Incredibly complicated task, and you're talking about a space vehicle that has no less than a million parts. There are all kinds of things to consider. Tremendous amounts of speed, tremendous amounts of heat. A lot of it just boggles the imagination. One of the ways that NASA and the military get a handle on all these things is they use uh, complicated simulator systems. A company called Analytical Graphics is heavily involved in that, and they're here to help us out, helping us visualize what happened in the final minutes of the Space Shuttle Columbia. Bob Hall is with Analytical Graphics. He's joining us uh, from Atlanta. Bob, uh, first of all, um, how much data do we have to support our simulations right now? Right now, Miles, what we're using is some existing shuttle flight data. As you know, uh, following Saturday's accident, all the flight data for this particular mission has been locked down. All right. So some of this is supposition, we should tell people, and some of this is uh, taking a standard re-entry, putting in that data, and so we probably should give that caveat to our viewers before we show them many of these simulations, correct? Correct. This is actual shuttle trajectory and shuttle attitude data it's just from a previous mission and what we have done is gone ahead and added a speculative piece to depict the debris falling off of the ET. Alright, so let's, uh, what, what, as the shuttle rises uh, from Earth, uh, obviously a tremendous amount of power is unleashed. Uh, 80 seconds um, after launch, it's, uh, I don't know, at an altitude approaching 100,000 feet. What were you able to, did you get a sense of what the trajectory would be, the path of any sort of debris that would fall off the external tank? Yes, it would probably come from the, up on the tank as the recent videos that you've got have shown. And if, if I slow this down here, you'll, you'll see this piece it starts out up here. Yeah, uh, we, we can sort of see it going off there uh, And it's going to follow a trajectory down the wing there. All right. And um, that, you know, when you're talking about a piece of foam, everybody thinks a foam or a, a sponge they might have in their kitchen that doesn't seem like that would do much. But give us a sense of the kind of velocities that we're talking about here and how that might cause some problems. Well, I think it's hard to say at this point without studying the videos what the velocity would be. And obviously there's a, a great deal of discussion about whether foam would be able to cause enough damage to the tiles. Now the other thing is, of course, that fuel tank is filled with liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. Liquid hydrogen is minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit, the coldest thing on the planet. So there's a lot of ice in that tank, typically. typically. They watch for it. Uh, they, don't, uh, they try to avoid launching with a lot of ice on there, and there's a lot of uh, means they have to try to protect against that. But nevertheless, ice has struck that orbit in the past. Th that is correct. And so in that sense, this is not necessarily unusual. And I, but I suppose uh, when you're talking about uh, the meeting of ice and foam with what is, after all, a fragile system, a lot depends on where it strikes. Th that's true, too. If you, if you notice here, I've highlighted this is the left uh, main gear door that has been the subject of much discussion on the underside of the orbiter. And that, that left main gear door, all the doors are always a, a big focus of concern for uh, NASA because of the obvious thing with their seams. Now, the seams on these doors, it's kind of like your, um, your kitchen oven, if you will, uh, kind of that metal strip around there to, to try to keep uh, the plasma, that hot plasma, from coming in there like a blowtorch. Uh, but if that were perturbed, if it were bent in any way by anything, whether it's ice or uh, foam or whatever, uh, it could create an effect where the, the heat gets kind of uh, pinpointed on a certain spot, couldn't it? Oh, absolutely. As, as, you, as you pointed out correctly, the door is, is one of the key parts of the underbelly. 
As says, uh, one engineer told me just a little while ago, the doors are the Achilles heel. All right, we'll be watching that. Uh, what we do know is this. Uh, we don't know if that piece of foam or ice or whatever it was is in any way linked to it. We do know there's a lot of focus on it because of where we saw the trouble began for the Space Shuttle Columbia. It did all sort of emanate from that left landing gear door. Uh, that's where the heat buildup was. Uh, the wires that led to those flaps, which went silent, their heat sensors went right through that door. Uh, if something very hot got past that door, uh, there was nothing that could have protected uh, the orbiter. Leon? Thank you, Miles. We'll be getting back to you in just a bit. We're also going to be talking with experts here in the studio who know quite a bit uh, more about the different materials that are actually used there on the shuttle as well as on that tank, and we'll learn a lot more about that coming up in just a bit. We'll also learn about how people down at the Kennedy Space Center are dealing with what happened over the weekend. They've had a few days to try to bring their thoughts there and their hearts and minds together over what happened, but they're still, as you might imagine, going through some emotional times there, and we'll take you there live in just a bit. <laughs> People die just for trying to help mankind. 